In the last segment, you saw a time-lapse uh, video of my uh, converting um, this project into the avatar. Uh, toward the end of that segment, you saw that I made the cuts while the clay was still relatively wet. So a day has passed now since that uh, since I made the cuts, I'm going to call the I'm going to call it the parting line cuts. So I made um, parting line cuts on the sides here and across the uh, bo below the below the chin, so that when I take this apart to hollow it out, it will be four segments: the two at the bottom and two for the head. So for our project today, we're going to need a um, blade loop tool that, that's round like this, your needle tool, and this um, putty knife that has a really wide blade. The purpose of this is to pry this apart. So I'm going to start by prying apart the top and then it's also going to be necessary to have uh, foam to rest working parts while you're doing the scooping out part. So those will be the things that you'll need. And then eventually we're going to, what, what, at, at the end of this, we're going to free it from the armature inside, hollow it out, score it, and, and, and reassemble it. So I'm going to start, oh, I said I would start at the face. So I'm going to start by standing up and seeing if I can get the front off of this first. So this, it's hanging on to the bale. I may want to take this, the back part off first. Yeah. Since I, oh, what's really important, that, that just reminded me. It's really, when you're making the parting line cuts, it's really important to make the cuts as straight as possible because the tool you're going to be using to pry it off with is this big wide blade. If you make a curved parting line cut, you won't be able to use this tool for, to do its job. So notice that the parting line cuts that I made are very flat, are very straight-sided. Now, that also enables you to sit the working parts down flat on the table without disturbing the detail. So those are the two really good reasons for cut, making very straight cuts. So with my needle tool, I'm going to put a guideline or diagram of the thickness of the facing. What I'm calling a facing is the edge here that is going to be reattached to the other working part of the head. Now, with this blade loop, I'm going to scoop out the unwanted clay, uh, and it's more plastic because it's been inside this core than it is on the outside. So leather hard, what, what we're calling leather hard it is um, when the clay is malleable enough to do things like hollow it out, but still stiff enough that it retains the detail and doesn't get all mulled over. So timing is a really important, uh, timing this is really important. Another thing I'm noticing is that here where the bale was on my project, it's gotten really thin right here at the neck. So I don't have a lot of um, surface area on the facing here at the neck. So I'm going to have to restore clay 
in this thin area. This is a common, this is a common problem uh, with w doing, um, with removing the project from the armature. And so what I'm doing with my needle tool is I'm scoring th the um, clay on the inside in the thin spot. Now I'm going to grab my um, I'm going to grab my water bottle, my my spray bottle, and spray some water in there, so that the clay starts dis dissolving on a local area. And I'm going to use the very clay that I just excavated from the unwanted area. I'm going to actually use that to restore the thickness where I need it. But I've noticed that this clay, this clay is a lot more plastic than the clay on the outside. So that, that's what's enabling me to do this. I'm going to call it a repair because I'm, that's yeah, more like restoring. I'm doing a restoration of the thickness of here. Looks like I need a little bit of it right here too. So I'm going to do a little, a little bit of scoring there. Like, and you always want to put water in the scored area because then there'll be moisture there for, to receive the more plastic clay. Okay, now I can get on with the business of hollowing out the rest. Um, yeah, so I'm going to also grab a bucket or a bowl to collect the remaining, I guess you could call the shavings. I don't know if that's a good term for it or not. That is, uh, clay. this is clay that I can recycle. So, you know, that's one of the advantages of working with water clay is that the leftover clay can be used, re reused, reused after it's been recycled. Now, I'm going to be very careful at this di this edge that I've mapped out, so that um, I I don't get this too thin. The common beginner mistake is carving away too much clay, and then you get this thin spot. Or, or it might actually go through and, you know, you have a gap in your artwork. So we're going to use the rule of thumb. Uh, I'm actually using my thumb as a measure of the maximum thickness that I want. If the clay is too thick, steam will build up while it's being fired and it'll uh, explode or pop off the part of the clay that has trapped the, the, the moisture. So we want the wall thicknesses of your project to be as uniform as possible, and the thickness we're looking for is the thickness of your thumb. That's why I've created that diagram at the border. It's really easy to see what you're doing here at the border. It's not so easy to see what you're doing as you dig down further into the piece. And it's for that reason that you're going to want to have your needle tool hand, handy at all times. So this, it's good that you can see the actual working rhythm that I'm using. So I'm going to, I'm going to scoop out what I can see, and then I'm going to use the needle tool to measure what I can't see. So I'm pushing the needle tool in out from the inside, and I've got my finger on the part of the face um, it, it, waiting for the sensation of it coming through. When I can, I can feel it coming through right there. So I'm going to stop pushing. Then I'm going to take my other finger, go right down to where the clay stops my finger, and when I come out, I will have measured the thickness of my thumb. See, so you see why my thumb is an important sort of measuring guide. So I don't want to be carving any more right there. That's going to cause problems. Now, the one place on the face 
where people, uh, where beginners often uh, have a a common re recurring thing that happens is that you get your project back from the bisque firing and the chin blows off. So I'm right now I'm going to show a technique for making sure that we get enough clay uh, excavated from the chin. Okay, so the foolproof way to make sure that you've removed enough clay at the chin is to start by taking your needle tool and making marking a key line and then I'm going to use my wire to um, cut the chin off of the face long enough to hollow it out and then I'm going to put the chin back. It's necessary to put a key line in there so I keep so I can keep, make sure I don't put the chin up back on upside down. Okay, so as you can see, the, the amount that I removed is thinner than my thumb, so I don't need to be excavating this part at all. But I do need to get my fiddling knife and cut out a hole there so that it's not a double thickness. And of course, I want to be sure that um, I keep enough surface area to, on the facing to put the chin back. if I can get that from the other side. Okay. Now the next tool that I'm going to introduce is the scoring tool. They, uh, there's more than one kind. This is a uh, at the hardware store, this is called a paintbrush comb. That's a very uh, effective scoring tool. But it's got a big, coarse pattern. At the pottery uh, store, they have a much more refined uh, and finer uh, tool, which I prefer. So if you can get this kind of tool, that's better for, make, for scoring. So I'm going to score the, play, the facing that I want. Oh, one bit of a get beginner mistake that's common is the, when the beginner will remove the chin and then get, it, get that clay mixed up with the recycled clay and then you, you lose, the, 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 lose the chin. You're not going to do that. You're going to keep it over here where you can find it. Um, now I'm also wanting to score the part of the chin that I removed. Notice that when I'm scoring, I dig in really deep. Uh, a lot of times people see me do this, and then they just make these little wimpy marks, and that's not going to do the that's not going to do the job. When, you, when you're scoring, you need to do it like you mean it. Okay, so I've sprayed. I've scored both surfaces. I've sprayed both surfaces, and I've lined up the key line so that I don't put the chin on upside down. And the way you know that you're, uh, you're, you've done your job of affixing the parts is if you, I call it going for the ooze. You can see where a slip is, has, is now oozing out as I'm forcing down on the uh, parting line. And then it's, it's plastic enough that you can just wipe that off uh, and it, it eliminates that unwanted detail of the, the seam line. Okay, that's good. So, um, let me see if this... Clay has a lot of compression strength, but it has no lateral strength. So any kind of extremity that sticks out 
is going to eventually get broken off, especially in the process of doing this uh, uh, hollowing out process. So an example would be the ears, of the avatar. Uh, I decided to cut the ears off um, for the time it takes to um, uh, hollow it out. I took that measure earlier when the clay was a lot more plastic, so now I can just remove that uh, uh, in its leather hard state and it'll hold its shape. So I, I, I did that as a precaution to prevent the ears from getting broken off. Now later I'll score this, I'll score the ears, I'll score where they belong and put them on just like you saw when I did the chin. Now, it's a little bit tricky here because I'm having to, I'm seeing that my uh, facing is gotten a little bit, uh, it's a little bit confusing where my facing is. So I'm gonna, again, take my needle tool and start creating a diagram of where the facing is going to be, and I want to make sure that that facing is, at minimum, uh, the thickness of my thumb, so that there'll be enough surface area to join the face to the back of the head. And then, as before, I'm going to scoop out the unwanted clay. So, um, again, I'm going to repeat what I said before. Oh, by the way, I haven't done the diagram of where the f f head meets the shoulders and neck. So I need to do that facing also. Make that real clear. And the right thickness. Now you can see why I'm having to have a pillow or a foam to work with while I'm excavating the clay. If I use the tabletop, the table is going to mar the, the detail that I want to uh, preserve. Now, there's, there's an advantage here uh, where I'm uh, scooping out the clay. It's easy to see when I'm working right at the border, border. It's not so easy to see as I get further down where the clay is in the way. So I'm going to demonstrate using the needle tool as a probe one more time because this is an easy way to see. I've got my hand on the outside and I'm going to push the needle tool in until I feel it coming through on the outside. Then I'm going to take my right finger and push it down to where the clay stops my finger. And when I pull it out, it should be the thickness of my thumb. I've hollowed out the top part of my project. Uh, now I need to pry off the sections of the bottom from the board. Again, re remember when I was doing the uh, cutting the parting line when the clay was more plastic, I was making sure that I would cut in a straight line so that I could use this tool at this point for prying it loose. I'm just going to edge away from that on that side and come in from the other direction. Oh, and then if you haven't done it already, you need to get underneath and pry it from underneath also to separate it away from the board. If it starts to shift like this, you'll know that you've separated it from the board.
that this also kind of can reveal what why I'm having a problem. It looks like I need to cut deeper here. And that's the reason that I'm having a hard time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I got Project Liberated from the armature. Uh, you, part of your job will be to dismantle the armature because we use the, the plumbing and the uh, armature wire for projects the next semester. Okay, that's a good place. To... One of the places where students often carve away too much, they were point, um, point the camera at me. In every portrait likeness, there's this shallow right here where the tendons of the neck join. That just happens to be the narrowest place on the armature because you're oftentimes putting more clay on the back than on the front. So you could see where the plumbing of the armature comes right down to that spot on the portrait right here. If I carve away any more of that, it's going to be too thin. So I can, I'll demonstrate by measuring right there at that narrowest spot. And I can see that I, if I carve any right there, it'll be too thin. It's already thin enough. So just remember where the plumbing is, you don't need to do any more carving. Okay, that's good. A lot of times in this taking away or scooping out step, uh, beginners will get mesmerized by the activity with this tool and then find themselves carving all the way through and there's a big old gap in their project. So you heard me say earlier that you, as you're going along, you're measuring to make sure you, you've gone far enough. So the working rhythm looks a lot like this. I put this tool down, pick this tool up, carve some. Put this tool down, pick this tool up, measure. Put this tool down, pick this tool up, carve some. Put this tool down, pick this tool up, measure. And so on like that. That way, if you're going back and forth and back and forth, you don't, you're less likely to get mesmerized and uh, sidetracked uh, to the point where you've taken away too much. Now the next thing I'm going to do, this is the last of the four parts that I've carved away now. And I'm almost ready for the next step. Let me measure again. Still a little bit thick right here. See how I'm doing that? Put the tool down, pick this tool up. Carve a little bit, measure. Carve a little bit, measure. Now if you see little air gaps, that's the result of not settling the uh, clay down when you were modeling it. We're not going to worry about um, small amounts of trapped air. Pottery students often get all freaked out about that. Well, that's important in pottery, not so, not so important with sculpture. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is score. Using, using the scoring tool, I'm going to score all of the facings. So. Oh, notice that the bottom of the project is open. There's no, there's no floor in your, in your portrait bust. So I prefer this smaller, um, sharper um, carving, uh, scoring tool. And you'll notice that when I use this, I don't score with the contour or against the contour. I score at a diagonal. In this way, I'm able to be more precise and score a lot deeper. If you just make this little wimpy mark, that's not going to do it. That's, that's not going to do it. You have to really get in there and dig like you mean it. So try to be consistent in uh, scoring at a diagonal to the facing. And remember, the top. Uh, needs to be uh, joined with the bottom, so you have to have facing at the top and the bottom of each piece. 
Well, I don't have this. I don't need to score the bottom of the sculpture. Okay, now I'm going to do this side. Notice that where the hair, where when you're doing a caricature, where it goes in, it needs to go way in, and where it comes out, it needs to go way out. And so this part right here was potentially going to be a, a thin spot. So I left this clay to accommodate that thickness. So I've hollowed out all four parts. I've scored the facing on all the sides that need to be joined. I'm going to start by joining the bottom half, uh, and then we'll continue with the top half. So you have to be very thorough about scoring deeply, and you have to be very thorough about spraying it with water. Now notice how I've got the nozzle of my spray bottle up really close so that the water's going right into the places that I've scored. If you spray the whole project, if you just hose the whole thing down, you're going to have yourself a mud puddle. So the more, spe the more specific you can be about aiming the water, uh, the less mess you're going to have on the outside of the project. Now just like before, what we're looking what we're going for is the ooze. So as I rejoin this, I need to make sure it meets in the right place. And then I'm going to be pushing the, the advantage here is I can access the inside and the outside as I push together. And I'm looking for where the clay is oozing out at the parting line. As you can see right here in this detail, there's ooze coming out. I'll be able to chase that. Chasing is the word for restoring the detail at the parting line. So you can visibly see the parting line right now. Later in another segment, I'll show and tell about how to chase that detail, that unwanted detail away. I'm going to join, Rolling. now I'm going to join the head to the back of the head to the face. Uh, okay, so when it slips that much, it um, it smashes shut the scoring. So uh, experience has taught me when it slips that much to re-score and re-spray it so that that interface gets enough slip and grip. Slip and grip. Let's try that again. All right. Let's try that again. Now this time I want to try to push it together without wiggling it too radically. Here, here's a good view of where I'm pushing in from the outs out from the inside and in from the outside so that I get some certainty about it joining enough at the base. OK. 
Okay. So it looks like I kind of mold over my facing right here. So I'm going to rescore that. And I'm ready to mount the head on the on the top. Okay, so you want you'll want to step back because I'm gonna stand up now. So what you can't see me doing um, is I'm forcing down from the top while I'm um, aligning the parting lines of the neck so that I can see plate oozing out. All right, the last step is the ears. I want to make sure I get the right ear and the right side. Here. Spray the facing on the ear and the head. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's the right side. There we go. a little step right here that's not supposed to be there. So before I put the ear on, I'm going to pull out from the inside to align that up. Otherwise, I will have to fill that later. And I don't want the extra thickness. Okay. Oop, looks like I mold over my scored spot right there. I did that. Okay. Okay, that's going to be a wrap for that segment. <laughs>